You're still here. You reek of old age. Go home already. This harsh outburst came from our oldest son's wife during their housewarming party. My husband and I had come to celebrate our son's new home and were shocked by her audacity. Our son stood up, probably trying to calm his wife down, but beside me, my husband quietly muttered, Shall we bring this house down? At his words, our daughter-in-law's arrogant smile turned into a surprised gasp. Little did she know at the time that it wasn't just the house that was at stake, but her entire life as well. My name is Jacqueline Green. I'm 64 years old. I married my husband Sam and moved into his family home, where we lived a contented life. We were blessed with two sons, Robert and Ted, both of whom have grown up, have families of their own, and are doing well. As for Sam and me, all we want is to live out our remaining years in peace and happiness. However, there's one little thing that bothers us. It's our oldest son's wife, Alice. From the moment I first met her, I didn't have a good impression. Alice was 24 when she first came over to introduce herself before marrying our son. Although she greeted us at the door with a hello, there was no smile on her face. Let me see, you're Alice, right? Since she hadn't introduced herself, I asked my son just to be sure. At my question, Alice scowled. What, does Robert have other women? Both Robert and I were taken aback. What are you talking about? Of course not, Robert hastily reassured her. Well then, why did you need to confirm my name? Alice started to argue right there on the doorstep. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I nervously tried to calm the situation. Even though she was young, I couldn't help but think she lacked common sense, but hoped that time in marriage would improve things. That's what I thought at the time. Both families met, and everything proceeded smoothly. Alice's parents seemed like very nice people. They run a small electrical shop together, and they gave off a good vibe. I thought positively that Alice's initial behavior was perhaps due to her love for Robert. After their wedding, the couple moved to an apartment nearby. A few years later, our younger son Ted also decided to get married. It was a bit of a shotgun wedding. Ted was still in college, and his bride-to-be, Megan, was 20 and working from home after finishing high school. Honestly, we were worried. We had no idea what kind of girl was going to come into our lives, but when we first met Megan, she came with a gift and introduced herself politely at the door. I was surprised. Although we had thought that Alice's behavior was due to her youth, Megan, who was even younger, was very polite and respectful. There were some concerns about how their relationship began, but Megan seemed like a wonderful and kind girl. In the time leading up to their wedding, Megan visited us many times. She always offered to help out around the house. Of course, we couldn't let her do that, but we were incredibly touched by her thoughtfulness. The second son's wife's family owned a small construction company. Ted, who was still in college, decided to drop out and start working there. Then a beautiful baby girl was born to the couple. When the baby turned six months old, they decided to hold a belated wedding ceremony. Of course, the eldest son and his wife attended the ceremony. However, Alice looked sullen the whole time. Despite being a part of the family, she was constantly on her phone, never leaving her seat. Both my husband and I wanted to talk to her, but we could tell she gave off a vibe that said, Don't talk to me. The wedding ceremony went smoothly, but the problem arose after that. Since they had a small baby, they decided not to have an after-party, so we suggested, why not have a small after-party at our house? Ted and Megan were thrilled. We prepared snacks and appetizers, and Robert and Alice joined us at our house. However, a commotion ensued. There, that was a lovely wedding. Megan looked beautiful, said the eldest son. Of course, those kind words made the atmosphere pleasant, but it was the eldest son's wife who completely shattered the calm. What are you saying? Who are you calling beautiful? Are you cheating on me? She angrily confronted her husband. Everyone was stunned by her overreaction, but I quickly snapped out of it and tried to calm her down. Alice, calm down. Robert didn't mean it that way. But it seemed like that was a mistake. Now I became the target of her anger. Alice glared at me and shouted, How did you raise him to be such a cheater? Isn't it your fault for raising him this way? Then she lunged at me. Alice, calm down. Alice, please stop. Enough is enough. The children and my husband stepped in to restrain Alice. I immediately told Megan to take the baby somewhere safe and asked her to leave the room. Looking at Alice, who was panting heavily from her outburst, I was sure she must dislike all of us. No, everyone involved with Robert. She sees only Robert. For better or worse, we decided it would be better for Robert's sake to distance ourselves from them, and so we have kept a minimal relationship with them up to now. After the incident, I told Robert, don't you think it might be better to divorce? To which she replied, I have thought about that too, but when I mentioned it, Alice apologized in tears. After receiving words of apology from her, both my husband and I decided to leave the matter to the two of them. 
Despite the ups and downs, our eldest son and his wife celebrated their 15th wedding anniversary. Since they didn't have children, we didn't have many opportunities to meet with our eldest son and his wife, but we figured it was better to go on without any confrontations causing issues. Both my husband and I thought the same. Then one day, our eldest son contacted us. He said that he had decided to start his own business, focusing on the development of a game he had been working on as a hobby. In other words, our eldest son was going to be the CDO. He said he didn't need a large office to develop his game, but he would hire a few employees and each of them would work from home. Because there would occasionally be a need for meetings, he told us he was planning to build a new house with a small meeting room and his own workspace. My husband and I were very happy to hear that our eldest son was turning his hobby into his career and looking toward the future. A few months later, a mansion was completed. We were invited to the housewarming party along with our second son's family. It had been several years since we last met our eldest son's wife, but she had become a fine adult. I thought there wouldn't be any problems like before. Thinking that, we brought our congratulations and visited our eldest son's home. Hello, excuse us, I said as I rang the bell. My eldest son came out to greet us. He guided us inside the house, saying, This is the conference room, this is the workspace, and this is the living area. It's properly locked. He led us to the living room while showing us around the house. Oh, it's lovely, I said, looking around the room with my husband and the family of our second son following behind, all wearing smiles. A meal was prepared in the living room, but I didn't see my eldest son's wife. Where is Alice? I asked my eldest son, but he didn't want to talk about her. In the end, we started eating without her. My husband and second son each gave their housewarming gifts to our eldest son. You didn't have to do all this, my eldest son said, grateful but accepting the gifts with thanks, acknowledging the celebration. The second son's family had one more child since then, and the older child was already in elementary school while the younger child was still two years old. Both of them were excited about the new house. That's when it happened. There was a noise upstairs, followed by the sound of footsteps and someone coming down the stairs. What? Alice is here. I called out to my eldest son, but he didn't answer. Then, when she entered the living room, she frowned upon seeing us. Alice, hello, it's been a while, I called out to her, but she was still looking sullen as usual. Then she said to us, you're still here, you reek of old age, go home already. Alice's harsh words froze the warm atmosphere in the room. Hey, Alice, how can you say such a thing? Robert chastised his wife, but it was clear Alice had no intention of taking his reprimand to heart. Well, it's the truth, isn't it? Our brand new house is getting ruined because of them. I told you not to invite them over. And what are you, some big shot CEO now? Hanging around with some old codger who keeps working past retirement and people who are so average they had a shotgun wedding after dropping out of college. We live in completely different worlds. I was speechless, and so was my second son's family. Even my grade school grandchild was struck dumb in surprise. I had made various excuses attributing her behavior to her youth or excessive affection for my eldest son. But that was my mistake. Something essential to her humanity is missing. She lacks warmth and kindness towards others. It's not that she loves my eldest son the most. She loves herself above all else and values her status as the wife of a company president more than anything. I was furious. I couldn't stand silent anymore. As I was about to retort, my husband, who had been listening to the argument between my eldest son and his wife, let out a sigh. Usually calm and gentle, he said, maybe we should just tear this house down. At my husband's words, my eldest son, second son's family, and I involuntarily looked at him. Nobody could believe that such words had come out of his mouth. Only my eldest son's wife let out a surprised gasp. What? Do you even understand what you're saying? Alice asked. Of course I do, my husband replied. A house designed by me and built by Ted might be better off not existing. Alice was stunned at my husband's words. I'm sure you, as the president's wife, wouldn't be satisfied with such a house designed by an old man and built by someone beneath ordinary. Our worlds are different. You should just move out. My husband's calm tone was ironically scary. Knowing this, none of us could interrupt the conversation between him and Alice. What do you mean? Alice started to tremble at his words and she glared at my eldest son. Noticing her gaze, my eldest son sighed and said to Alice, it means exactly what he says. This house was designed by my father, a top architect, and the contractor is Megan's family's firm, with the foreman being Ted. I may hold a title and be a president, but I neither have substantial wealth nor reputation yet. Thanks to my family. I could own such a wonderful house rather among us. I know we are the most ordinary or even beneath ordinary. Alice turned pale at my eldest son's words. She must not have known, but even if she didn't know, didn't she ever wonder? There's no way our eldest son's income and savings alone could have built such an impressive house.
My husband didn't even charge for the design work, and there's hardly any profit for our second sons-in-laws who run a construction company. I can't thank enough to our second sons-in-laws who helped us simply because we're family. Yet our eldest son's wife has the audacity to act pompous just because of her husband's status. Who does she think she is, saying that we're less than average? Alice repeated his words as if she couldn't believe them. You could see the despair on her face. Indeed, my husband still works for a company even after his retirement, but that's because the company asked him to stay on as a top-tier architect. Our second son is being groomed as the next boss at his wife's family business. He gets good treatment not just from his co-workers but also from the business partners that his wife's family has had relationships with for years. And even though he's not yet the president, he's working hard for the company. Yet in this group, Alice is at the bottom of the barrel. Our eldest son laughed, looking at his wife, whose face had turned blue as if she was about to cry at any moment. Our second son also started laughing involuntarily, but the atmosphere was anything but pleasant. Our second son's wife quickly picked up on the mood and took their child to a nearby dollar store. She's really good at reading the room and is very considerate. Apologize to dad and mom properly if you understand. Our eldest son stopped laughing and yelled at his wife. What? Am I really that bad? You're always on their side. It's only natural for a husband to side with his wife. Alice fought back. Sure, that's right, but it's also a husband's job to point out when his wife is wrong. You're wrong. If you have a complaint, quit being my wife right now, our eldest son replied. Truly angry. Seeing her husband so angry, Alice quickly changed her attitude and conspicuously knelt down. I didn't know. You never told me, she said, acting like a tragic heroine. Then, as if intoxicated by her own performance, she turned to my husband and me and began to apologize. I'm really sorry for the rude things I've said. We watched her act with a blank expression, not feeling a shred of sympathy. Her overly dramatic apology didn't touch our hearts at all, and it was too late to apologize anyway. We had no intention of accepting her superficial apology, just like last time. Seeing his wife in this state, our eldest son asked, Dad, Mom, what do you think? Am I terrible? Am I doing something wrong? My husband looked at me, realizing that I had something to say. I couldn't forgive her for her previous remarks, no matter what. No, Robert, I think you're right. If a wife disrespects her family, it's a husband's duty to correct her. I will reflect and change my attitude. Alice continued her melodramatic act. No, Alice, this is not the first time you've been disrespectful to us, is it? Haven't you been told this every time by Robert? Robert must have pointed out your words every time, right? What about that? I asked. At my words, Alice bit her lip, turning pale. I don't meet someone who belittles my husband and son in the Green family. It would be better for both of us to cut ties, I said. Jacqueline, she cried out in a desperate voice. In our fifteen years of marriage, it was the first time she called my name. We live in different worlds. I threw her words back at her. At those words, Alice collapsed on the spot and froze as if her spirit had left her body. She might be regretting her actions a little bit. Being told that we live in different worlds must have been a significant blow to Alice, even though they were her own words. Although I thought that, my second son said, Mom, you were really cool. It seemed to be quite a shocking remark for Alice. In the end, my eldest son Robert decided to divorce his wife Alice, who loved Robert so much. When Robert proposed, if you want to stay with me Alice, you need to start working and contribute to the mortgage for this house, we got at a reduced rate. Alice turned bright red with anger. At the time of their marriage, Robert had told her, I want my wife to be a homemaker. 